I want to cover this concerned.tech letter in support of responsible fintech policy. Yep, this is anti-crypto. This is just more, oh man, look at all the people they're sending this to. And there's like tons of signatures for this. Yep. Writing to Congress about how crypto is just oh so terrible and basically we need to ban it or at least severely restrict it and regulate it. And they said they got 1,500 computer scientists. They got all these signatures. Hey, how many Steves you got? Huh? <laughs> Anyone remember that reference? But, um... Yeah, they love tooting their own horn about how they're producing innovative and effective products for blah, 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 database technology, open source, cryptography, and financial technology applications. Mm. Yep. Yep. Many of these have a stake in traditional financial assets. They're not independent like they're claiming to be. Hang on a second, just double checking that this is recording because you never know. All right, I think this is good. I'm seeing no frame drops. All right, I'm gonna keep going with this then. Yeah, and uh, if you look through these names, a lot of them are just anti-libertarian. And some of them are just, you know, politically anti-crypto. Um, a big example is Molly White. You know, check her out. Just a major anti-crypto propagandist. The only name you'll see there of any note is Bruce Schneier. And I've always been a fan of him. And, you know, he wrote the uh, Applied Cryptography textbook that I cut my teeth on back in the 90s. But I've also been covering kind of his slide into the dark side. Because until recent years, he was incredibly skeptical of any government uh, regulation. And so then he took the position of, well, I guess if regulation is going to be inevitable, we need to get on top of it and make sure they're written correctly. And of course, it's just a small slide from there to, yes, we need government regulation. All government regulation is good. So yeah, we've, uh, sorry, hang on. Spot on my glasses, but yeah, we've seen him, uh, we've seen his descent into darkness. Okay, today we write to you, urging you to take a critical, skeptical approach toward industry claims that crypto assets, sometimes called cryptocurrencies, crypto tokens, or Web3, are an innovative technology. By the way, in case you're wondering, social media was Web 2 or Web 2.0, so cryptocurrency is Web 3 and, and blockchain technology and all that. Are an innovative technology that is unreservedly good. We urge you to resist pressure from digital asset industry financers, lobbyists, and boosters. Yeah, it's all about the lobbyists, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like in the gun debate. You know, the, the gun control people are all grassroots, even though, like, every town is like, how, mi how many millions is Michael Bloomberg pushing into that? But I don't know, the pro-gun people, that's all lobbyists. That's all NRA lobbyists, even though their, like, annual budget overall is, like, five million or something small like that. You know, the... The big lobbyists in the, the gun industry are really kind of tiny, and it's the, the big lobbying money is in gun control. But they have to say it the other way because they got to appear to be grassroots. Same thing here. Same thing here. The big money, the big, 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 big money is from these big financial uh, stakeholders. And crypto, by and large, with some exceptions, is just a grassroots movement. So. But they gotta pretend otherwise. To create a regulatory safe haven for these risky, flawed, and unproven digital financial instruments. I like how wanting to be left alone is a regulatory safe haven. Just leave us alone to interact with each other in the way that we choose. That's a regulatory safe haven. Yep. And instead, take an approach 
that protects the public interest and ensures technology is deployed in genuine service to the needs of ordinary citizens. And of course, it will be government deciding what genuine service is. And unproven, well, you gotta prove that to the government. Otherwise, you're not allowed to do it. Do you think you're living in a free country? <laughs> no, 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 no. Where'd you get that idea from? So here we go. We strongly disagree with the narrative peddled by those with a financial stake in the crypto asset industry. Yeah, like a lot of these people, like I said, they've got stakes in the, the status quo, the traditional financial industry. So. And what's wrong with having a financial stake in it anyway? If you believe in something, then you're going to invest in it, right? What would it mean if you didn't have a financial stake? They'd be saying, well, don't you believe in it? These guys don't even invest in what they advocate in. Yep. Morton's Fork, we'll see more of that. But That these technologies represent a positive financial innovation and are in any way suited to solving the financial problems facing ordinary Americans. As opposed to these traditional financial systems, which are closed. They're not private. Thank you, Eddie Snowden, for pointing that out. They're permission. They're censorable. We've seen that. People just having their finances cut off. Oh, we don't like what you're saying online. Therefore, we'll stop, you know, PayPal and MasterCard and Visa from, you know, letting you get donations from people. And they don't like the fact that cryptocurrency gives them away. And you've got all these legacy industry regulators smothering innovation. We've got innovation everywhere else. Amazon, big innovation over, you know, the, the old ways of doing things. You know, Barnes & Noble, Netflix, big innovation over, you know, blockbusters. All of these innovative technology websites we've seen over the last 20 years. Where have we seen the innovation in the financial industry? Where is it? I mean, okay, there's been some. We no longer have to, you know, just type in you know, all of our uh, account numbers on websites and things like that. And we've got the chips that help stop, you know, the uh, the the fraud in um, like credit card scammers, things like that. Sorry for the edit; had to blow my nose. I'm not completely over this stuff yet, but wanted to spare you from that. But cryptocurrency represents the one innovation we've had in finance. And look what they're doing to it. What other innovations are we being robbed of? If we had financial freedom the way we've had freedom in web technologies over the last 20 years, how much better off would things be? So. All right, let's go down to where they actually start making claims. And they don't do anything to support any of these claims, spoiler alert, but yeah, they'll, they'll make them. Let's see, blockchain technology cannot and will not have transaction reversal or data privacy mechanisms because they are antithetical to its base design. Now, this is the one claim they make that is in any way relevant to their expertise. And it's wrong. The one claim they made about their expertise, and they got it wrong. This is not a good sign. Um, a blockchain is just a ledger. That's all it is. And the way ledgers work, the way ledgers traditionally work, the way they always work in uh, finances is that you make the entry in the ledger, and then you don't change it. So they're talking about transaction reversal. Transaction reversal doesn't mean you go and scratch out the previous entry in the ledger. It means you make a new transaction that credits that back. So, you know, uh, the only thing the blockchain does is prevent that older entry from being modified. It doesn't stop you from making a new entry that credits it. You'll see this like if you have, um, if you have a bogus, uh, uh, entry, someone makes a fraudulent, uh, 
charge to your credit card and you do a charge back, you'll see it. They don't go and they, they don't delete that fraudulent because they got to keep records of all this. They got to keep records of all this. What they'll do is they'll make a new entry in your uh, transaction list, giving you the money back. That's how it works. So uh, financial technologies that serve the public. Oh, God, beware of this serve the public. You know what serve the public means? It means screw the individual. Because <laughs> that's the what's the opposite of public. That's the individual. We've declared that this isn't good for the public. So individuals can't use it no matter how many of them want to. Because no matter how many individuals want to use it, it doesn't serve the public. Yeah, you see? You see? So. Financial technologies that serve the public must always have mechanisms for fraud mitigation. No, they don't. You don't always need fraud mitigation. In fact, there's a lot of cases where you don't need it. Ask merchants what is the one thing they hate about taking credit cards. And that's the chargebacks. Someone goes into their store. They buy stuff. They walk out the door with the stuff. And then there's a chargeback. And now the merchant doesn't have the money. That's bad. That's bad. And the financial system does not have a good solution for that. So in a case like that, you don't need fraud mitigation. If you're, if you've got a point of sale where you do a direct transaction, you know, you give the money, you get the stuff, you walk out the door. You don't need fraud mitigation on that. Where's the fraud mitigation? The fraud mitigation uh, is in stuff like, you know, if someone gets your credit card information and then uh, and then goes out and, and spends it. And, and we've seen all sorts of things like that with the traditional financial system, like major, major data breaches where people's credit card numbers have gotten away from them. So uh, go, go to haveibeenpwned.com. Go, go and check that out, uh, because you can put in your email address, and you can see all of the data breaches that your email has been a part of. And you can even sign up to have it emailed to you. Get an email alert. Hey, you know, the, the site you're on. Hey, it was breached. And they got all your stuff. You better go change your password and you better go alert your credit card company because if you give me a credit card number and that credit card gets away, well, that's a problem, isn't it? Well, that doesn't work with crypto because if you give someone your crypto address, they can send you money, but they can't take it. You know, if I want, if I work for someone and I give them, you know, my direct deposit information, what is that? Well, that's the bank routing an account number. So they can send direct deposits to my bank, but they can also withdraw. Can't do that with crypto. Nope. Can't do that. And no matter how much money I send you in crypto, you cannot use that information to go and grab more. And if a hacker gets that information, he can't use it either. So the app I love is um, this uh, Dash Direct app. And this is great. You've got all sorts of uh, gift cards and virtual MasterCard that you can use to purchase uh, goods and services at every merchant in America. If it's one that has a gift card, then you can save, you know, I'm looking at 1-800-Flowers, you can save 8 and a quarter percent. Wow. Yeah. So you can save money. Save 3.75% at Ace Hardware. If you need some hardware. So good stuff. Anywhere else, you can just use this virtual MasterCard. So... The way it works is since Dash is uh, instant, you just do it at the point of sale. So you've got your own little, you know, non-custodial wallet that only you have access to. At the point of sale, you get like, oh, this is $23.46. So you're going, okay, oh, yeah, $23.46. And it puts that onto the gift card or the virtual MasterCard. And then you immediately run it through the point of sale system. And so what are they going to be able to get? If someone steals your uh, MasterCard number, what are they going to get? They can't get anything because there's nothing on it. There's nothing on it except for those couple of seconds between the time you move it from your secure crypto wallet 
onto the virtual MasterCard. It's there for a couple of seconds while it's run through the point of sale system. So there is slim to zero chance of that money being stolen. So if someone gets the credit card number, well, it'd be annoying because you'd have to, uh, you'd have to go in and cancel it and order another card, but you won't have to worry about people taking your money in the process. Not going to happen. So yeah. Yeah. These, these big data, data breaches, they're, they're just huge problems and crypto solves it. Crypto completely solves it. They don't even mention them. They don't even mention them, which for their expertise is irresponsible. So. And allow a human in the loop to reverse transactions. Blockchain permits neither. They are either lying or they are so ignorant of crypto that no one should pay any attention to them. Silk Road. 2011. Oh yes, that big criminal marketplace. But you know what they had? They had exactly this human in the loop, fraud mitigation, reverse transactions. Yep. They had a human escrow. If you bought something on the Silk Road, you know, you gave them your Bitcoin and you didn't get the stuff. Guess what? You just told that escrow person, Hey, I didn't get my stuff. And they reverse the transaction and they give it back to you. Yep. So for a decade, we've had 11 years. We've had this, you know, and, and Ethereum, you know, you have smart contracts. And if one person doesn't fulfill their part of the smart contract, the other person gets their money back. <laughs> it's there. It exists. This isn't theoretical. It's already happening. It's crazy. Not to mention what happens ordinarily. With the financial said, well, you got to take them to court. And the court says, well, you've got to pay them back. And then so they have to make a payment. What stops it from working here? What stops that from working? Hey, I paid them. Even though you paid them in cryptocurrency, you still paid them. You take them to court, you get your money back. Yeah. All the same stuff works. All the same stuff works. Blockchain technology is poorly suited for just about every purpose currently touted as a present or potential source of public benefit. They don't say what they're talking about, but if you read Satoshi's original white paper, which is about a uh, digital cash that is public, international, immutable, permissionless, censorship free, it works for that. Works beautifully. From its inception, this technology has been a solution in search of a problem. Really? You don't think any of these things I've mentioned are problems? You don't think these problems exist? Bruce Schneier, I know you know they exist because you report on them. And has now latched onto concepts such as financial inclusion and data transparency to justify existence. Now it's lashed onto them! Only now, after the fact! Lie! That's in Satoshi's original white paper. Read it. Despite far better solutions to these already in use. Where? Where are your solutions for any of the problems I've mentioned? Where are they? Where are they? Where are the solutions of, of people being unbanked? Where are the solutions of all of our transactions being spied on by our government? Where are our solutions for, where are your solutions for this? Where's your solution for the Byzantine generals problem, huh? Tell me that. Tell me that. The big unsolvable problem that Satoshi solved. Do you have a solution for that? If you do, let's hear it. Publish. Publish! Publish or STFU. There you go. So. Despite more than 13 years of development, it has severe limitations and design flaws that preclude almost all applications. Application right here. Hello. That deal with public customer data and regulated financial transactions. Well, maybe we don't want public customer data and regulated financial transactions. <laughs> maybe we don't want that. Maybe we want an option where we can get away from all that and are not an improvement on existing non-blockchain solutions. I've just said how they are. 
Blockchain technologies facilitate few, if any, real economy issues. I got your real world economy issues right here. Here's your real world economy issues. The underlying crypto assets have been the vehicle for unsound and highly volatile speculative investment schemes that are actively being promoted to retail investors who may be unable to understand their nature and risks. So what hasn't? Are you saying that doesn't exist with dollars? Are you saying that doesn't exist with stocks and bonds? What, what doesn't that? If it exists, criminals are going to try to figure out how to exploit it. That's just, that's just how it is. That, that's not an argument. Other significant externalities, we'll come back to that word, include threats to national security through money laundering and ransomware attacks, financial stability risks from high price volatility, speculation, and susceptibility to... Okay. Earlier, you said the problem is that crypto isn't private. Now the problem is that it's private? Make up your mind. Here's Morton Fork again. Okay, yeah, it's it's not private because it's a public blockchain and you can trace it through even though there are privacy coins like Monero and now Litecoin is uh, now private. But now the problem is that it is private and therefore it can be used by money launderers. Yep. Yeah. They've got money la Most money laundering is done with dollars. And also, if, if you really want to deal with money laundering, you got to look at the art world. You got to look at art sales. You want to know why all these, you know, paintings made by these obscure artists are being, that you've never heard of, are being sold for millions and millions of dollars? It's money laundering, people. It's money laundering. You got some obscure artist and you've bought up, he's made like 10 or 20 paintings and you've bought them all up for a few hundred each. Then you got some guy on the black market who owes you $50 million. Well, instead of doing this, you know, black market, you know, try and figure all that out, you just sell him this artwork that he bought for a few hundred for the $50 million. And what are they going to say? That art's not really worth $50 million. Okay, prove it. How are you going to prove what art's worth? It's objective, right? So, the fact of the matter is, the anti-money laundering and the know your customer, it's just an excuse to destroy privacy. Because that, that's where you have to do things like take a picture of yourself holding your license. Yeah, what happens when there's a data breach on one of those? Huh? What's going to happen to that? Really? Again, keep in mind that the idea here is that crypto is digital cash. What happens with cash? If you make a transaction with cash and you hand over the cash, can that be reversed in the way they're talking about? No, it can't. Can you have the anti-money laundering with cash? No, you can't. So, nope. Uh, massive climate emissions. Do I really need to debunk that again? I don't think so. Check the several other times I've covered that. Investor risk from large scams and other criminal financial activity. Again, you have that with everything. It always exists, and you're always going to have to figure out a problem with it. This is not a problem that is any way unique to crypto. In fact, if anything, crypto gives you more protections other than other stuff for stuff like I'm talking about, like protection from data breaches, things like that. We implore you to take a truly responsible approach to technological innovation and ensure that individuals in the U.S. and elsewhere are not left vulnerable to predatory finance and fraud. And how is crypto any more susceptible to that than dollars again? You know, and systemic economic risks. These people not bought groceries recently. Filled up your gas tank recently there. Have you seen the systemic economic risks that everyday people in the world are having to deal with because of a central banking system that does not care about the people, that does not care about the privacy, that exists only to enrich the politicians and the bankers and their cronies.
Where's your solution for all that, huh? Where's your solution for inflation? Where's your solution for the inflation tax, huh? The inflation tax, the most regressive tax there is. The biggest tax on the poor and working class. That again just benefits politicians and their cronies. The catastrophes and externalities, neither isolated nor are they growing pains, they are inevitable outcomes of a technology that is not built for purpose and will remain forever unsuitable as a foundation for larger scale economic activity. Says who? Says who? As a few years ago. I don't think anyone figured out exactly what it was. Whether it was someone doing a stress test on the Dash network, or someone trying to attack the network to take it down that completely failed, but... Something happened and someone created tons of different you know, transactions on the Dash network that were almost certainly bogus, but... Not only did it fail to take down the network, it proved how scalable Dash is. And they proved that at a minimum, Dash can scale up to 32 gigabyte block sizes. That's easily Visa levels. That's way beyond PayPal levels. So. So again, this isn't a solution that they're working on solving. This has already been solved. So. And they say it again, given these vast externalities. Well, we've seen what they're talking about. These people don't know what an externality is. They apparently just heard an economist use that word and say, ooh, that sounds bad. I'm going to apply it to all this. Money laundering is not an externality. You know, financial fraud instruments is not an externality. An externality is a third-party cost that is not reflected in the price. The closest they, they came to mentioning an actual externality was the climate stuff. Which, again, is bogus, but... But that's a traditional externality, pollution. You know, you pollute the air, that imposes a cost on people, but you don't pay the cost directly for it. That's what's meant by an externality. And so much about economics is how you can internalize the externality and, and actually reflect those costs in the price. So they don't know what they're talking about. The only thing they have an expertise in is the technology stuff. And they've mentioned one technological, technological aspect of it, and it was wrong. So, At best, still ambiguous, and at worst, non-existent uses of blockchain. Here's a use. Here's my use. You see my use? Do you see my use? Yeah. Actually making... I can go out right now. Buy a Subway sandwich for lunch. How much would I save using Dash Direct? Save, save 2%. Save 2%. Oh, I can save 4.8% of Jersey Mike's. Ooh. I'm going to, yeah, save some money. Yeah, go out right now and, and get, get a sub. Yeah. Save almost 5%. Yeah. No, <laughs> non-existent uses. Look beyond the hype and bluster of the crypto industry and understand not only its inherent flaws and extraordinary defects, but also the litany of technological fallacies it's built upon. What technological fallacies? You haven't mentioned any technological fallacies. You haven't said anything of the kind, so... We need to act now. We can't wait. It has to be right now. Oh my God. How many times do these people say something like that? You know, we can't wait. We can't do any studies. We can't learn what we're talking about. It has to be now, 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 now. Yeah. Yeah. Just rush through. No, 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 no. Well, you, do, you, do, you don't read this bill. Don't take the time to read this bill. We got to pass it. It's going to happen now, now, now. Oh, God. It, things like this just make me want to go nap violation all over these people. So. To protect investors and the global financial marketplace from the severe risks posed by crypto assets. Yeah, risks to the 
global financial system. The financial system that is invading your privacy and stealing your wealth. Maybe we want those to have some risks, huh? So that we can have the power over our own lives again and over our own finances. And that we can actually engage in economic activity without government breathing down our necks, looking at everything we're doing and deciding, oh, well, we don't like you, so we won't let you participate. Boom, unbanked. And not be distracted by technological obfuscations which mask an abject lack of technological utility. Confession through projection much? Technical obfuscations, what have you been doing all through this letter? Abject lack of technological utility. Do I have to show it to you again? Technological utility right here. Right here. Right here. Using it every day. Using it every day. Everyday purchases. We urge you to consider our objective and independent expert judgments. You're not objective. You're not independent. You're biased. You're freaking biased. You hate privacy. You hate freedom. You hate economic independence. And you've got major interest in the financial status quo. You pack of liars. That's all this is. That's all this is. Guide your legislative priorities, which we remain happy to discuss any time. Well, do they ever discuss it with you? Do you have the same access to these politicians and major financial players that they do? Or is this conversation very, very one-sided and always will be? Like George Carlin said, it's an exclusive club and you and I are not invited. That's how it is. That's how it's always going to be. That's why we just need to do it ourselves and not bother asking for permission. And that's the moral, and my voice is going, so I'm going to let it be here. So thanks so much for watching. Comments for the Common God, shares for the Share Throne. Like, subscribe, and the bell. Donate.bogosity.tv. Give me your crypto. You think crypto's so bad? I'll take it off your hands. I'll take it off your hands. You can also do PayPal, and you can also do uh, the, the usual Patreon and subscribe star. You can get these videos early and ad-free and other benefits. Just check the left-hand side of the page. Uh, to see what you're looking for. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay strong and be free and use crypto.